Hello, hello, I'm Brenton, one of our MCAT tutors here at Inspira Advantage, where we help students get into med school and other professional programs. Today, we're going to talk about atomic orbitals and quantum numbers. This is a crucial topic for your MCAT prep as it forms the foundation of understanding electron configuration and atomic structure. This is a big topic tested on the ChemPhys section. Let's dive on in. Starting with atomic orbitals. Really what this is is a mathematical function to describe the behavior and probability of finding an electron within a specific region around the nucleus. The three most common types of orbitals you're likely to see on the MCAT are s orbitals, p orbitals, d orbitals, and maybe f orbitals. s orbitals up top in red here are spherical in shape and increase in size with increasing principal quantum number n. So the higher the n, the bigger the sphere. Our p orbitals are dumbbell shaped. Our dumbbell shaped existing in three orientations. They can be on the x-axis, the y-axis, or the z-axis. And then our d orbitals are a more complex shape where we've got a bunch of different ones we could have here with four lobes and five different orientations in space. And the f orbitals, you don't need to know what they look like for the MCAT. You just need to know they exist. And they're even more complex than the d orbitals. Let's take a look at the quantum numbers. So these sound a lot scarier than they are. Beginning with the principal quantum number, which we symbolize with n. This determines the energy level and size of the orbital. So it has to be a positive integer starting at the number one. So it could be one, two, three, four. It could not be negative. It could not be zero. As n is increasing the energy's electron, the electron's energy and distance from the nucleus is increasing. So an n of one would look like a small sphere and an n of four would look a lot bigger. Finally, we have the azimuthal quantum number, also known as the angular momentum quantum number because it's easier to say. Uh, we symbolize this with a curse of L. And this is defining the shape of the orbital and has an integer values from zero to n minus one. So what this means, if we have an n of three, the only possible numbers we could have for L would be 0, 1, and 2. And each of these values is going to correspond to a different orbital type. For example, 0 is s, 1 is p, 2 is d, 3 is f, so on and so forth. Next up, we have the magnetic quantum number, or m. This is describing the orientation of orbital in space. This can range anywhere from negative 1 to plus 1 and include 0. For example, if L equals 1, so a p orbital, M can be negative 1, 0, or plus 1, corresponding to the three different orientations. Those three different orientations being on the X plane, the Z plane, or the Y plane. Oh, so this is how it's all connected. And then finally, we have our spin quantum number, or MS, Little Miss Spin Quantum Number. This represents the electron's intrinsic and angular momentum of spin. Electrons can have one of two values for this. It can either be plus one half or minus one half, which denotes a spin up and spin down respectively. So here's just a nice visual visualization to kind of recap all that. So n is telling us our energy, the size of our orbitals as as a methyl or angular momentum is telling us the shape. Magnetic is telling us the orientation of that shape and spin is talking about the electrons themselves if they are spin up or spin down. So now let's quickly go over some of the principles underlying quantum mechanics for the MCAT. These quantum numbers are all governed by the Pauli exclusion principle, which states that no two electrons in an atom can have the same set of quantum numbers. This principle helps us understand the distributions of electrons in an atom. So what I mean by this is we can't have two upspin electrons. We have to make sure one's up and one's down. To determine the configuration, we can walk through these set of rules. The first is Aufbau's principle, where we fill in electrons from the lowest orbital first, working our way up. Next, we have Hund's rule, which says that electrons will occupy equal energy orbitals one at a time with parallel spins before filling an orbital with two electrons. So in simple words, these are all up spins until, oh, we filled them. Now we have to start adding the down spins. Now let's take a look at how we could write this out. So let's take oxygen. 
oxygen, we can write the electron configuration of 1s2, 2s2, 2p4. The way we do this is through counting. So let's first get this 1s. So we've got two s's from that 1s column. So this is where we put the 1s2. That's where that's coming from. We have also in the 2s column, again, we're using both. So that's where the 2s2 is coming from. And now everything in blue here is the p columns. So this would be p1, p2, p3, and p4. So we just write p4. And that's how we can use electron configuration to, and that's how we can figure out electron configuration, which is tested frequently on the MCAT. So what type of problems can this help you with? Understanding atomic orbitals and quantum numbers will definitely help you with periodic trends, understanding that elements in the same group have similar electron configurations, which can help explain trends in atomic size and ionization energy. It can also help explain chemical bonding. The distribution and availability of valence electrons determines the type of bond formed between those atoms. Are they going to be covalent bonds, ionic bonds, or metallic bonds? It also can help you better understand spectroscopy. Quantum numbers can help predict the energy levels of electrons, which is essential for understanding spectroscopy at a deeper level. And it also helps if you do have a molecular orbital theory question, which is not likely, but can happen, because quantum numbers are the foundation for understanding how atomic orbitals combine to form molecular orbits and do chemical bonding. Again, not likely you'll see MO theory, but it has happened. So as we wrap up here, and as you continue to prepare for your MCAT, remember to recognize the shape and characteristics of different orbitals, S, P, D, and F. Understand the four quantum numbers, N, L, M, and M, S, and what they mean, what they can predict. And apply the rules for electron configuration. Remember the Aufbau principle, Hund's rule, and Pauli exclusion principle. You also need to know which one came from who. The MCAT loves testing you on your history of the scientists. And finally, use this knowledge of atomic orbitals and quantum numbers to tackle MCAT questions related to periodic trends, chemical bonding, spectroscopy, and if you happen to see it, MO theory. Thank you so much for watching this video on atomic orbitals and quantum numbers. Be sure to check out our other videos for more MCAT prep tips and insights, and good luck. Thank you so much for watching this video on atomic orbitals and quantum numbers, and I'll see you next time.